I guess one of the biggest lies that uh, American people swallow these days is that somehow that the corporations are leading prosperity in this country. That if you don't, it, see, you have to give all the breaks to large corporations, and then because they're the employers of the people, and when they when they prosper, the money trickles down to all the little people, and everybody prospers from their wealth, from their their reciprocity of wealth. Uh, and that is a a, f- f- a fact that is not a fact at all. That is actually fiction. Uh, it doesn't work like that at all. Instead, what the corporations do is they they accumulate wealth, hoard that wealth, and then fail to pay tax on that wealth. And when they do expand, rather than expand in this country, they take their business overseas and they expand in other countries where the labor is cheaper. That's why your jobs are eviscerating. So the more tax breaks you give to them and the less you regulate them, the more they become monopolies and oligarchies, right? So, so how are we, are we going in the direction of, of breaking them down and, and bringing them back down to size and forcing, I don't know, maybe some antitrust laws that prevent mono, uh, monopolies and oligarchies from existing? No, not at all. In fact, the Fed... Uh, will give banks a $36 billion tax break funded tax taxpayer funded subsidy this year. $36 billion just to banks. It, it's just, it's unbelievable. So Zero Hedge is reporting. And I also want to talk about uh, uh, students. How are, how, are we, how are we doing? We'll find out how the banks are doing and we'll find out how we're doing and some students down the block are doing. And you're not going. You won't believe what you, what you hear. Before 2009, the Fed did not pay interest on banks' excess reserves held at the Fed. This practice was introduced as a taxpayer-funded subsidy to the banks during the crisis, right? The 2008 debacle. Taxpayer-funded because the Fed turns over any profit at the end of the year to the Treasury, right? After it's it's complicated and confusing, I know, but this is what they do. You got to dive into the numbers, and you find out that it's socialism for for banks, right? Where they get all the opportunities, and they get lazy, and they just keep ripping people off, and and there's no consequence, so they don't even have to pay the money back. They don't even pay it back. So that's this this lies the problem. So we could talk about all the social issue issues that are rage, raging on. Yeah, yeah, you know, there is there is a problem of censorship in this country, and there's a, I, I just saw a bunch of people got kicked off Facebook for voicing their opinion. Uh, well, when you look into their opinion, the people that are voicing these opinions, they're all social issues. Nobody attacks the real problem, which is income and wealth inequality, and banks getting all the breaks where people get ripped off. Right? So they put your attention over here, right? Instead of Instead of screaming and yelling about social issues, put your attention over here, and we'll we'll maybe we'll be friends someday. After beginning this practice, the Fed ch- uh, chief trader Simon Potter realized it could be used to raise interest rates without expelling excess reserves from the Fed by sucking liquidity out of the s- short-term markets. It's fucking total gibberish, right? In fall 2015, it began raising the interest rate on excessive reserves with the ant- ant- anticipated effect. Quanti- quantitative uh, easing was something that was an emergency measure, and now they're reversing it. It's all bullshit. It's total, it's total unequivocal bullshit. Uh, this, the reason that, that we're, we're starving is because of what I just told you. The corporations don't pay tax. They, they, they ship all the jobs overseas. They hoard money. And they, they have all the control. They're 99% of the, of, of they, they, they're 1% of the population. They control 99% of the wealth. At a current rate of about $36 billion a year, this is a cost to the treasury that is indef- indefensible. Right. It's indefensible. How do you how do you justify corporations that get all the tax breaks, that ship all the jobs overseas, that have all the money and all the power, getting thirty six billion dollars a year for no reason whatsoever? How do you what how do you justify it? Right. Uh, this amount is about half the budget for food stamps, for example, which politicians want to cut. There is no provision for these funds ever to be paid back. It is welfare for the bankers. 
Wow. We have welfare for bankers. Well, bankers are on welfare. And meanwhile, they want to cut half the population that's on food stamps, one in seven people in the country. They want to cut them off of food stamps, starve them, literally starve them. People without food stamps that depend on that, that monthly, that monthly, you know, nut every month when they go and they get their, you know, some food, if they're unemployed, they want to cut them off, right? Cut them off. And, and then what? Go live under the bridge, work harder. Is that the idea? It's really a sick, sick society we're living in. If the banks had been required to take excess uh, reserves back onto their books, it would have required financial disclosure of their, of their quality, which is probably toxic for many. Right? So it goes, this article goes on and on. Not really, but it talks about how the banks get welfare. Right? So what about students? Let's talk about that. I'll end on students. So I just saw this article t today in, in Zero Hedge. Almost half of college students are going hungry. <laughs> Did you know that? Half of the college students in the country are going hungry. Wow. As thousands of college students prepare to graduate in the coming weeks, many of them will be stressed out, deeply in debt, and very hungry, literally, according to a new survey from Temple University's Hope Center for College Community and Justice. Guy looks hungry. Mm. A senior at Lehman College here in the Bronx dreams of starting her day with breakfast. <laughs> wow, college kids, man. You remember fucking they used to dream of dream of travel and dream of, you know, meeting the perfect person and having, you know, and now they dream of breakfast. Oh, it's so dude, it's so fucking good as Americans, man. We're fucking killing it. An undergraduate at uh, New York University said he has been so delirious from hunger. He's caught himself walking down the street, not realizing where he's going. A health science student at Stony Brook University on Long Island described poverty naps, where she decides to go to sleep rather than to deal with her hunger pangs. Damn, we're going the wrong way, man. We are going in the wrong direction. It was at a pantry at uh, SUNY Stony Brook where uh, Jocelyn Chen, a volunteer there, spoke of her poverty naps. She said that many students are unable to visit the food pantry between classes or go off campus to find cheap food without a car. <laughs> so you don't have a car. The, the food on campus is overpriced. Right? When you're in class for like three hours, it's hard to concentrate when you're hungry, she said. Uh, back at the dorm, she explains, it's easier to take poverty naps than to uh, forge for something forage for something to eat. According to the survey, 44% of students from over 100 institutions said they had been, quote, food insecure over the past 30 days. Food insecure, 44% of, of students. That's, that's insane. All right, so banks, get, get, banks are getting, banks are getting uh, you know, $46 billion in subsidies they don't need, and students are, are dealing with their hunger, literal hunger, because of tuition being too expensive, pay, jobs not paying enough. The whole thing is imbalanced. It's a slave nation, a, a wage, slave wage Nation is what, we, what we've what we become, you know, and 99% of the people must obey the 1%, and they're happy with that because they're fighting, you know, most people right now are fighting this, this illusion that somehow, somehow Trump is going to overthrow the, the, the deep state and, 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 and then Joe Biden's going to win and restore civility to the world and it's just we're, 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 we're going off the cliff. We're going off the cliff, you know, and uh, that's just how I see it, you know. Kindly become a sponsor of this uh, channel and uh, support real news, real news, real truth, right, for a dollar, two dollars, the best two dollars you could spend, right? You support it and you keep the, the truth stream going, right, because they're trying to shut us down. This station is demonetized. If you ever see a... a an ad on this channel, it's not going to me. That's because maybe I copyrighted somebody. I, I took a bite of music and got a strike, and then they let, you, they let you have the video, but they take the money by throwing an ad in front of your face. 
Uh, so kindly, again, the only way that this channel makes money is if you buy stickers on eBay, Marcus Conti stickers, you'll find them, or become a Patreon for as little as 2 or $3 a month where you'll get free stickers. Or if you make a, pay, a PayPal contribution, uh, I'll also give you free stickers. And that's the only way this is, this is supported. Uh, Marcus Conti reporting. Kindly also subscribe because, again, YouTube is doing their best to unsubscribe people. Marcus Conti reporting.